We are one game into the biggest two-week stretch of the A season. They're pushing for a playoff berth. They lost the game that they needed to win. Is their season over? Let's talk about it. You are locked on A's. Your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How's it going, A's fans? And welcome to episode 352 of the Locked On A's podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, noted baseball fan, Jason Burke. And on today's episode, the A's lose to the Mariners kicking off the, the next two weeks on just the, the, not the right notes that you're going for, if you're asking me. Um, Shamanaya wasn't great. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Also, we got another update on Chris Bassett. Is he returning to the A's pitching staff? We don't know if it's rotation, relief pitching. We'll get into that too. We're talking about all of that. We're doing the wild, wild West watch. We're going to talk about the A's latest edition waiver claim, Michael Feliz. And uh, what, what what that's about. And all that. So uh, that's what we got coming up for you guys today. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we get into any of that, make sure to join Walking Baseball Encyclopedia, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call him Sully every day on the Locked On MLB podcast for a unique look at both the majors present and past. Featuring exciting guest interviews and routine check-ins from the Locked On MLB's network team of local experts like myself, subscribe to the Locked On MLB podcast today on the Odyssey app or wherever you guys get podcasts. And, uh, you know, wherever you guys like to get podcasts or, you know, watch podcasts, you can subscribe to this podcast, too. You can follow us on social media at Locked On A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter and in the Spotify green room app. I'll be going live probably Thursday for that day game. So mark your calendars, clear your schedules. I'll be there. I'll be there live on Spotify Green Room. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, if you guys have any questions for us, please send those to lockdownathletics at gmail.com and subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, we got some subscribers yesterday. Thank you to, it doesn't let me know who you guys are, but thank you to like the three or four new people that are uh, on the YouTube page. I appreciate that. And uh, this is this is what I look like. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's get into the A's loss to the Mariners. They're now 4-9 against Seattle this season after their 4-2 loss to Seattle on Monday night. Shalmaniah wasn't great. He was okay for the first two innings, and then he ran into a little bit of trouble, gave up three runs in the third, and then one in the fifth. And uh, then, then his night was over. He went five innings, gave up four runs, uh, struck out three, and that's how he walked one. And he gave up eight hits. That was a lot of hits. That, honestly, a lot of hits. And that's not necessarily what I was hoping that they would get out of Shamanaya. What I was hoping for was the, what was it, 16 innings that, that he gave them uh, in his two other starts against the Mariners. And he gave up one run in those 16 innings. I was hoping for something closer to that because you got Paul Blackburn going. You got uh, Cole Irvin going. You got some decent pitchers. And, and James Caprillian, too. Uh, maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that here in a second. Um, you don't have your... Your Montas and Manaya lined up. Well, he had Manaya lined up, and then he went five and gave up four. So not necessarily what you were hoping to do in your first game of the next two weeks that determine your postseason fate. So I was hoping for slightly better. Uh, the bullpen, the the other bullpen, very good. Sam Mole, scoreless inning. Uh, Dio Lascara. Scoreless inning. He's actually part of the, the regular bullpen as far as I'm concerned. He's been good. Uh, Domingo Acevedo, two scoreless innings. He was he was good. They got four scoreless innings out of their bullpen, and they lost this baseball game. What a weird sport baseball is. Not a fan. <laughs> but it stinks that they lost this game. And I'll get into whether or not the season is over for the A's in the next segment when I go over the West Watch. Oh, yeah, I moved up West Watch. It's in the it's second segment now. Ooh, things are getting intense because we're talking about the playoffs a segment sooner. I figured that that was more important than the Michael Feliz signing claim. The claim of Michael Feliz. Um, so what other notes do I have? The, the Mariners are 9-4. and four. The, the A's win streak is snapped at 5. Meh, cool. Um... I guess I'm just moving on to Chris Bassett. I don't want to dwell on this loss. Do you? No. I'll talk about 
what the repercussions of this loss are for the season and the next seven. But let's talk about Chris Bassett uh, before we get into any of that stuff. He threw his fourth bullpen session in nine days. Uh, he threw another 30 pitches on Monday. And basically right now, Bob Melvin told reporters that they're, they're just waiting to see how he's feeling on Tuesday. So uh, depending on when you listen to this, we may know how Chris Bassett is doing and uh, if he's going to be pitching this week soon in some role. We we don't know uh, details yet, but that is basically what we're going with right now is, is he going to be feeling okay to pitch? And if that is a yes, then they will decide what their next steps are and how stretched out he is for a potential role in the starting rotation, in the bullpen, one of those two. Um, so it's basically going to be up to the coaches. Do they feel like he's stretched out enough where he can give them five, maybe six innings in a starting role, or is he going to be giving them one, two, maybe three innings uh, out of out of the bullpen and trying to help the ace out in that realm? Maybe piggybacking him with, you know, a James Caprillion or a Paul Blackburn or something. Probably not Blackburn because Blackburn pitches on Tuesday. Uh, so we don't, we don't know necessarily the details, but we should find out by the time reporters talk to Bob Melvin before Tuesday night's game. Usually three, three thirty four. A couple hours before game time, we should have a, a decent idea of whether or not Chris Bassett will be pitching A, this season, and B, potentially in what capacity. Uh, it, there's a lot of balls up in the air as of right now as I'm recording this, and uh, we'll, we'll know more before too long. Just hold your horses. We'll, we'll get there. It'll be fine. And according to Dallas Braden on the broadcast, he's pretty sure that uh, Chris is going to be pitching, or Bassett, as I should probably call him. Bassett is going to be pitching uh, later this week. So. I guess we can go with that. Uh, so that's exciting. I think that that could be a nice jolt of energy for the A's, whether or not it's against the Astros or the last game against Seattle. Nice jolt of energy for the A's. Sometimes it looks like they're lacking some of that energy. And uh, maybe seeing Chris Bassett on the mound will just give them that emotional burst that they need to win 12 in a row or something. I, I don't know. what they do. Whatever they need to do to make the playoffs, maybe Chris Bassett makes them do that thing. And <laughs> That that is uh that's that's what I'm going with. Okay. Um, so with that loss, with the loss that the A's had on Monday night against the Seattle Mariners, is their season over? That is the question. But you're gonna have to stay locked in with locked on A's to find out what I think about that. So so stay locked in with locked on A's and we'll be right back. <laughs> We're back better than ever. Speak for yourself, uh, Bet Online. I'm having a terrible time right now. We're back better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for all things football. Head on over to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 100% welcome bonus. That is double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. You know, NFL, the sport that they're catering to currently. And then the uh, welcome bonus that they're giving you, 100. NFL100, easy to remember. There you go. That, bet online, NFL100, simple. So go on over to the website and do that. And they got everything from football to basketball, boxing, baseball. They got playoff baseball odds and props and all that stuff. And they also got your favorite uh, Vegas casino games. You don't want to wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. And that is why everybody says that Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. You two people, you know what time it is. It's giant bottle of water. It's gonna leave that precariously like that. <laughs> that did not work out well. <sighs> Welcome back to the Locked On Ace Podcast. If you guys are enjoying the podcast, uh, make sure to subscribe wherever you like to hear shows and podcasts and you know words in your ears. And if you like, to, uh, if you're more of a visual person with an audio aspect as well uh subscribe to the youtube page all of these things are linked in our show notes so go go look down there hyperlinks it, i make it very easy just click and then boom you're you're there you can you can do this 
every single day. That is, uh, that's what we do here at Locked on A's. We do this every day. Um, also, make sure to follow us on social media at Locked on A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter and in the Spotify green room app. Again, going live on Thursday for the afternoon game. If you guys have any questions for us, please send those to Locked on Athletics at Gmail. Dot com. Um, but let's get into what happened. The Wild Wild West Watch. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a, a real quick one with some thoughts about how it impacts the A's 2021 campaign, whether or not they're playoff bound. So let's get into that. Uh, the Red Sox were off. So they, nothing happened with them. They, they didn't play. They, they, got, they got the Mets Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll see what happens with them. Uh, the Blue Jays lost to the Tampa Bay Rays 6-4. to four. Shane Boz, I want to say Shane Baz just because it sounds cooler, but I believe it's Shane Boz. He was uh, one of those guys that they got from the Pittsburgh Pirates in, you know, the infamous Chris Archer deal. It keeps giving, and that is ridiculous. So Shane Boz, he made his major league debut, went five innings, gave up two earned runs. Both of those were on solo home runs, and that uh, that he gave up. Oh, he struck out five. I wrote five home runs for some reason, and I don't know why. Uh, that definitely should say five strikeouts. It does not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Yankees beat the te- uh, Texans. Wow. Read one bet online ad and you're like, hey, yeah, the Texans. They beat Texas four to three. Their bullpen did not implode. Their starter only went four and a third. And the bullpen, much like the A's bullpen, was okay. Only they won the game and the A's lost. So that's the difference, I guess, right now. The A's lost to Seattle. Uh, and then Houston absolutely obliterated the Los Angeles Angels. They sent them back to Anaheim. Boom. <laughs> Rocket noises. <laughs> they beat them 10 to nothing. And now their magic number to win the AL West is six. It's not a lot. I don't think they're going to win the A's. I don't think that the A's are going to win the AL West, you guys. <laughs> it seems a bit out of hand unless the A's win like all of the games that they play them and then the Astros don't really win other games and the A's don't lose other games. It doesn't look like it's a good bet right now. So with all of that movement, the uh, the, it, it, the A's lost. So they lost a, a half a game to the Red Sox. The Red Sox didn't do anything to deserve that, but the A's lost. So now they're three and a half back of Boston for the first wild card spot. But the, the intention is probably to just get into a wild card spot. And so they are still two games back of Toronto, which is where they entered the day. Uh, cause Toronto lost. So whatever. And, uh, they had a one and a half game lead over the New York Yankees that the, 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 Blue, the Blue Jays did. And now that is down to a half game lead for that second wild card spot. Again, I said on yesterday's podcast, going over the schedules that the Yankees were going to be facing the Rangers. They'd probably sweep the Rangers, make everybody believe. And then, uh, they got a tough schedule coming up. They got, uh, they got Boston and then they got Toronto. And then they get Tampa Bay. They haven't played well against any of those three teams. And they haven't been playing well this month. So uh, if the Yankees sweep the Rangers, I'm not really buying too much stock into them making the postseason. No matter what happens, their schedule's extremely hard for them. Um, and then the, the A's are right behind the New York Yankees. And by right behind, I mean they're a game and a half back at the New York Yankees uh, with the Yankee win and the A's loss. And then Seattle is one game behind the A's. So they still are hanging around right there. They are three games back of Toronto. And uh, while the A's are still two games back. So Monday, in my opinion, did not end the A season. And part of that is just a mathematical approach because, you know, they have this many games to play and this many games back, they can still do it. That is why they have not been eliminated from postseason contention yet. Because math, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and believe in math this time, I believe. Hey, here's something I forgot to do. This one. Boom! Social media handle. <laughs> well, let's throw another one on there just for good measure. Boom! Very well branded over here. Um, so I don't think that Monday ended the A season because they didn't lose any ground except for to Boston, but Boston doesn't necessarily matter. And the Yan- the, uh, the Astros don't necessarily matter. What they need is a playoff spot. The one that is closest to them did not change. Would you have liked to have seen the A's make up ground? Yes. This is more, Monday was more of a lost opportunity than just the, the season going down the drain, in my opinion. And uh, that, that is my optimistic take on this. Uh, what I have liked to have seen the A's come out with a little bit more gusto and, you know, 
come out and score 10 runs in the first against Tyler Anderson, that nightmare fuel of Tyler Anderson. Uh, yes, I would have. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a punch. They came back and scored a run in the eighth inning, I believe. And uh, that was, it looked cool. It looked like they might still win this game, and then they didn't. Uh, 20, 21 A's. That's just what they do. They, they, they lead you on, and then they break your heart. But it felt like a missed opportunity for the A's. And that's kind of my point. Um, it, I, they're still in it. And the Blue Jays' toughest part of the schedule, I believe, for the next two weeks is this series right now. So if the A's were going to make up ground, it would be hopefully the next couple of days because uh, they're, they're uh, Tim, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays are facing the Tampa Bay Rays and the A's hopefully can beat Seattle at some point. That would be, that would be lovely. I, I really hope that they do that at some point. Um, they're still just two games back, though. Two games back, and the Yankees won, but as I said just a minute ago and also yesterday, they're probably going to beat the Texas Rangers. It's the rest of their schedule that I would be worried about if I am a Yankee fan. Uh, Stacey got two lace of locked on Yankees. I was uh, making her video for her. And I was like, so, so are they going to make it? She's like, probably not. No, I, I don't. I don't believe in this team whatsoever. So even Yankee fans and Yankee uh, local experts do not believe in this team. So uh, I'm not just talking, you know, out of my side over here. I am uh, bringing you knowledge. That's what I'm doing. I'm bringing knowledge. <laughs> um, yeah, it just doesn't feel like this Yankees team is going to be good. So I don't think that they're going to be a huge impediment. It's basically can the A's overtake the Blue Jays or if Boston falls back and Toronto overtakes Boston, can they get one of those two wild card spots? Because they need to one seat somebody. And I don't think that the Yankees are necessarily going to be a big blockade for that last spot. So that's that's where I'm sitting right now. Uh they didn't lose any ground, and I think that that's a big thing for me moving forward the next two weeks is don't lose any ground to these teams. You can lose when they lose, but you got to make up ground as well at some point, and you got to kind of take advantage of the uh, the losses that they are giving you. So you just got to win a couple of extra games. Just do a couple games better than the teams that you're chasing. You got a playoff spot. That's all they got to do. Okay, technically three games because the Blue Jays uh, are two, still two games ahead. So just th three games, three games. It, that's that's a big ask as of right now because there are only what twelve games left. Um, they're they're gonna have to do it. But baseball is fun and I like it. And the twenty twenty or the uh, twenty twelve season did not look like it was gonna be uh, as joyous as it ended up being. Those last. That last week was amazing, and uh, maybe maybe we got another one of those coming. Maybe not, but maybe the A's are going to hit their stride finally because Bob Melvin did say the A's best uh, baseball was still to come, and it hasn't come yet. So either he's wrong or they're saving it. I hope they're saving it. Uh, maybe they'll get some help from the, from uh, somebody else the last uh, couple of weeks of the season. Uh, who is that somebody else? It's Michael Feliz. I'm going to talk about Michael Feliz. So stay locked in with Locked On A's, and I will be right back. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all of that entertainment that you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch all of your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required content varies by package. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto parts stores to stock all of the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose 
to spend 30 or 50 or even 100% more on the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business and they've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years and their prices are always reliably low for every customer. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all of the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? And let them know that we sent you amazing selection of reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. That was fun, ha. Huh? Got very thirsty reading about cars. What kind of cars do you guys think of when you're, uh, for the YouTube people, this isn't going to make the podcast. When when I read that ad, what car comes to mind? I'm thinking of a big truck, like an, like an old truck. One that I would see across the street in my neighbor's driveway in like the 80s. That's what I'm picturing, like a blue one, like an old Dodge. What are you guys thinking of? Uh, hit me up on Twitter at Lockdown A's and let me know. And uh, <laughs> and just let me know that you, that you you listen to the things and all that. I thought that'd be fun. But uh, back for the podcast, people. Welcome back to the Lockdown A's podcast. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to hit subscribe uh, on our YouTube page. Also, follow us on social media at Lockdown A's on Twitter and Instagram. I am by Jason B on Twitter and Spotify Green Room app. Had to make sure that I got those ones right. Um, and also make sure to email us any questions that you guys have to lockdownathletics at gmail.com. Um, yeah. Also subscribe to the podcast, I guess, is the, the other thing that I wanted to say. I said I said subscribe and then my mind went YouTube uh, because we're pushing it. But let's talk about Michael Feliz, who was claimed off of waivers from the Boston Red Sox, he had played on three teams this season. So you know that he's having a journey if he's already played on three major league baseball teams and then he's on the A's and it feels like an A's move. Uh, to make room for him on the 40-man roster, they did DFA Aramis or Aramis Garcia, uh, you know, the backup catcher that was with the team for most of the season up until they got Jan Gomes. Uh, and then he was, you know, in the minors and now he's, now he's not. He got DFA'd. So uh, what he's got to pass through waivers and uh, if he gets claimed, then the A's lose him. But uh, that is, maybe they're going to keep you on the O's and just re-sign him for something. Probably not, uh, but that would be nice. I, I like young Gomes quite a bit. So what do you need to know about Michael Feliz? He is a 28-year-old uh, reliever. He's also a right-handed pitcher. And in 2021, he has played for the Boston Red Sox, the Cincinnati Royals, and the Pitt Cincinnati Royals? Cincinnati Reds. Jason, what are you thinking? Cincinnati Reds, my bad. Uh, and also the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, he was traded in the Garrett Cole deal from Houston to Pittsburgh. That's how he ended up there. And then he went to uh, Cincinnati from there and then ended up in uh, Boston. Now he's in Oakland, kind of. Uh, for the season, he has a 732 ERA. He hasn't pitched many innings in any of these starts. Uh, in total, he's at 19 and two thirds innings. And he has pitched for each of these three teams for six or seven innings. And then they're like, yeah, never mind. So maybe he's a bad clubhouse presence. I don't know. Cause his stats in two of the stops were okay. And then one of them, it was like a 12 ERA. So he had a bad time for like a couple of games at one stop. And uh, that was just weird. But so he's got a, a 732 ERA, a 448 FIP, which means that his defense has not been helping him do much. Uh, his K per nine rate is actually pretty solid at 10.1 Ks per nine. His walk rate, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. 2.7 for a guy with a decent K rate and, you know, some, he throws moderately hard. He's mid nineties. Uh, he can touch mid nineties. He averages around 94 on his fastball. It's not bad. I'll, I will take that. And it looks like his command has gotten better over the years, but that does come with one caveat of uh, his hits per nine is a bit high. It's 11.4, which is more than a hit in inning. And uh, it's not great. He's not missing the bats, except for when he's striking them out. And that's wonderful. Um, so basically his pitch mix is mostly fastball and slider. Those are his two main pitches. And that's roughly 92% of the pitches that he throws. His fastball averages at 93.8 this season. His slider is at 80.9. And then he also has a changeup, which he'll throw like 7.2% of the time. And that one is at 86.2. So there's not a lot of difference between his fastball and his changeup. 
I would like it to be closer to 10 miles an hour as opposed to, what am I talking about here, uh, seven? Yeah, just a few more. That, that's what I would like. And this changeup has been a little bit harder this year than it has been in previous years. But basically last year when he didn't throw that many innings and he only threw like five changeups. So really small sample size to go off of. So was it actually going, was there a bigger difference before? Not necessarily, but I would like to see a little bit more of a difference between his fastball and his changeup. Maybe that's something that the A's can work on there. Um, as far as why now, because uh, he, he's not available or uh, uh, eligible for the postseason roster, I don't believe because he wasn't on the, the club you know, beforehand. I, I might be wrong on that, but I think that he has to be on at the beginning of September. Might be wrong on the 40 man at least. Um, but he is arbitration eligible for one more season. And if you're wondering uh, if they're going to keep him for that, yeah, probably he's only going to cost him a million dollars and he's got some, some experience and he might be one of those Cole Irvin type uh, reclamation projects where they can, you know, bring something else out of them because Boston, not necessarily known for turning around pitchers, uh, the Reds kind of, I guess, yes, that they have, uh, they have done that a little bit more and Pittsburgh. Uh, that's where pitchers apparently go to die now. So this, the A's would be the first stop in the usual uh, line of, uh, the A's and Tampa and the Dodgers and maybe sometimes even the Reds. Um, it, it just feels like that is the, how these things usually go. You see a, a pitcher cycle between those three teams quite a bit, but he has not been to one of those teams yet. So maybe the A's get first crack and then they can, uh, they can turn them around. That That's the hope right now. That's what I'm hoping. It's probably going to be a 2022 kind of thing because I don't know that, uh, they're claiming a guy with a 732 ERA and they're like, hey, go eat some big innings as we're trying to, you know, claw our way into the postseason picture. I don't think that that's necessarily in the cards right now. I think that it's more of a 2022 move. And he was only uh, making roughly a million dollars the last two seasons in arbitration. And he hasn't really pitched well this season. So I don't see him getting much of a raise, even though it is his third year of arbitration. So um, roughly a million dollars for, uh, hey, let's see what this guy's got. He might be decent. Um, it just feels like a, a guy that the A's think that they can work with and whether or not that is finding a new pitch for him to use, maybe he's using more of like a Frankie Montas splitter or something like that. That would be, that would be pretty cool. Maybe it's throwing his slider more, just more <laughs> is all I'm going to go with just more than like 35% of the time. Uh, maybe that is something because his slider has been really, really good. I got some, uh, some stats here. It's got a 51.7% whiff rate which is great. That's that's a nice pitch. And the batting average on that pitch so far this season is 182 with a 176 expected batting average. So his slider is a very, very solid pitch. They can work off of that, maybe work on his pitch mix a little bit, work in that change up a little bit more. Maybe, maybe they can, you know, get more of a, a difference in between those three pitches. Cause he's, if as a two pitch pitcher, you can basically just sit back and wait on the fastball uh, and just try not to hit the sliders. That's all you got to do. That's right. Every day you got a 50, 50 shot most of the time. And uh, that's, you got to, you got to throw a little wrinkle in there. And it, that seems like something that the A's can do with him. And he's already got one really, really solid pitch to work with. So I think that that's kind of where they're going with Michael Flace. He's probably going to be getting a shot in spring training in 2022, uh, whether or not, that means anything for whether or not they're going to try and contend. I don't know, because it could be one of those, we're going to sell everybody. That's the plan. And then we have this guy who's going to be, we're going to turn him into a really, really good reliever. And then we can sell him too during our rebuild. Uh, that that could be part of it. It doesn't seem like it, or maybe they're going to keep everybody and, uh, you know, they're, they're going to try and have him be the closer. I don't. These are weird, and I think that they're they're probably going to end up trading everybody. So that's why I'm rooting very, very hard for a postseason berth this season. Uh, the, the season's not over yet. They, they've still got just two games to make up. They can make up two games. They just have to beat Seattle and Houston uh, a bunch of times, and they're 4-9 and nine against each of those teams so far this season. Can they do it? We're going to find out. Getting Chris Bassett back would be a huge relief. Um, whether or not he's a starter or a reliever, it would just be a big boost, I think, to the pitching staff because right now it's been Frankie Montas and Shamanaya who have been very, very good. Shamanaya has been a lot better in September up until last night's start against Seattle. Um, and it's basically been Montas 
we'll shut somebody down every you know five days and then you're like all right well let's see what we can get from you know cole irvin and uh paul blackburn and james caprilli and caprillian's he's gassed right now i think um not in a bad way he's just thrown more innings than he ever has and he, he needs to build up to this workload and uh paul blackburn he's been surprising he's been good but is he a guy that you want pitching down the stretch as you're trying to make the postseason? Probably not. But if you could throw in Chris Bassett or something like that and, you know, add him to some sort of pitching mix, I like the ace chances a decent amount. And there, there's something about getting that guy back in the clubhouse when he's putting on the uniform and hitting and, you know, heading out to the, to the mound. I think it could, it could have a big impact on the ace. So season's not over yet. We got two more weeks. Uh, we, we should find out where the A's stand by the end of this week. But uh, that is all that I got for you guys today. Tomorrow, uh, we'll be talking about, you know, more postseason baseball and uh, whether or not the A's season's over then or whether or not there are shoe wins for the playoffs. It depends on uh, what everybody does. If the A's win or lose or if the, the Jays win or lose or the Yankees. There's a lot of things. So uh, tomorrow we're talking about all of that will get you caught up. It'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, that, but anyways, that is all that I got for you guys today. Make sure to follow us on YouTube. Uh, follow us on social media at Locked On Aids on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter and the Spotify Green Room app. If you guys have any questions for us, send this to Locked On Athletics at gmail.com. But that's all that I got for you guys today. So until tomorrow, yeah, until tomorrow, uh, go out and celebrate good times, Oakland.